Hey everybody, this is George Trombley. We're going to keep going through Japanese from Zero, book four. We are in lesson 10. Today's going to be talking about new verbs, but I want to remind some of you that are watching that there are over 125 other videos. Even though this is officially 126, there's like Bs and Cs sometimes and additional videos that are added in the mix that don't get a new number. So what I want you to do is if you're here as a beginner, make sure you go back and maybe go to the main page and look for course one, two, three, and four. Course one is blue, two is red, three is green, and now we're on purple. And eventually, guys, we'll be on this bad boy, book five, and we'll be pink. Everything will be pink. My favorite design book. Honestly, this is one of my best made books, content-wise and design-wise. I'm very happy about it. All right, so let's jump into it. It is course four, lesson 10, new verbs. Don't forget, FromZero.com has really cool study modes in Japanese, and we're improving it every single day. And you can ask questions to our teacher, Kaneko, who will answer them, which is really great. You don't have to wait like for me maybe answering your comment. And if you want to get these books, remember all of the videos that I make are based on these books. All right, let's get to our first verb. Toru. Toru means to take or to get depending on the context. I will show you in a second what that means. It is a regular verb, which means it becomes Tori tai, tori masta, tori masen, tori masen desta. It's just e form plus all of the endings. And another verb that sounds very similar, toru. This is also to take, but it's to take a photo or to make a film. It's something to do with taking th something into a camera. Okay, it's different kanji, but sometimes similar meaning, and it is also regular and also e-form. A lot of times you have two verbs that are the same, but one will be a regular verb and one will be an iru eru verb. A good example is kaeru to return, kaeru, is a regular verb. So you say kaerimasu, but kaeru to change is an iru eru verb. So it's kaemasu, not kaerimasu, right? Kaerimasu becomes to return. And just like these two verbs are very similar, but just a different kanji, it's kind of similar to what happens with miru, for to look and miru to watch and kiku to ask and to hear and kiku to listen. Kind of like that a little bit. So let's look at what particles we use. Item o toru. To take an item or to take a photograph. So for example, if we're at the table, there's a scenario where this shio o toru can mean get the salt and one could be take the salt. Okay. So for example, if I say to you, Shio o totte kudasai. It means, please get me the salt. If I say, shio o torimashita, it means, I got the salt, right? I took the salt, okay? Shashin o toru, to take a photo. Let's do a couple more. Menkyo o toru. Menkyo is license. You could throw unten in front of it to make it driver's license, but you don't have to. Typically, menkyo, you're going to assume it's a driver's license. But it could be any other license. Like, for example, I have a real estate license. So I have a fudousan no menkyo, a real estate license. TikTok o toru. That means to film a TikTok. Now, I understand that TikTok might be going away as of our current political situation. It is 2023. Let me know in the comments if TikTok is still here. Um, it's April right now. So let me know. Future me will already know, but just for fun, put it in the comments. Item ga toreru is a really common usage of this verb. It's to be able to have taken an item, right? So for example, going back to our license example, menkyo ga toreta, I was able to get my license. The most important thing here is that the o is gone and it becomes a ga. It's really, really common. When it goes to the potential form, it becomes ga. There are times when it can be o, but it's almost always ga. It's more natural to make this as ga. As a matter of fact, earlier when we were working on this PowerPoint, there was debate if we should put it in there and we decided not to because it doesn't sound right to say menkyo o toreta. It's much more natural sounding to say menkyo ga toreta. Now this next one is different. Doga, a word you might not know, means video. Y yes, I know, I know Japanese has a word for video from English called Video, video. You could have said video, but doga, which is a moving picture, doga ga toritai or doga o toritai are both okay with the want to do forms, but ga again also sounds much more natural most of the time, but you can use own. It's not weird at all. So this is to want to take a video. All right, let's get through some example sentences. 
Let's see what we can translate. Write it down on paper or say it out loud so you can keep yourself accountable. Kongaki wa krasu o mitsu totte imasu. Kongaki wa krasu o mitsu totte imasu. Now I know you're still in thinking mode. Maybe you have to pause, but let me explain something here. We learned when we learned the counters, you might remember this and you might not. You generally don't put a particle after a counter. If you go way, way back to give me three in lesson 10 of book one currently, in the current version of book one, you would say, Mitsu kudasai. You would never say, Mitsu o kudasai. That is very weird. O comes after the Object, not the amount of the object. And in the case where I'm saying, Mitsu kudasai, the object is whatever we were talking about. It could have been some apples. And let's say I'm looking at apples and I say, Mitsu kudasai. That's ringo o Mitsu kudasai. Okay. Even though we didn't say ringo o. So don't put it after the counter. This is a super common thing. It'll make your Japanese sound weird if you do. So don't. So that's what's happening here. So, kongaki, kongaki means this semester. Gaki. Means semester. Kongaki this semester. Kongaki wa krasu o mitsu totte imasu. So the topic is this semester. What about it? This semester, we loop back around to find the verb because the English is SVO. That means the subject comes first. Once we got the subject, we got to find the verb. What is the verb? Totte imasu. Ongoing present tense form. I'm taking three. Classes this semester. So that's another way we can use tote must like just like we use it in English. I'm taking three classes. What about this one? Konsato de iseki ga toremashita. Konsato de iseki ga toremashita. I'm not allowed to have normal cups anymore in this room. I spilled coffee the other day. And I also spilled water the very next day. Now I have to have a lid. I am a baby. Concerto de いい席が取れました At the concert, I got, I was able to get good seats at the concert. Concerto de いい席 All right. Notice that we are using が here. 写真を撮るのが上手ですね。写真を撮るのが上手ですね。Kind of nice, right? We're combining all the grammar we've learned in this book into these sentences. So we are making a noun phrase out of the shashin o toru. Shashin o toru by itself means to take a photo. When we make it no, it's taking a photo, okay, or taking pictures. Shashin o toru no ga jozu desu ne. You are good at taking pictures, aren't you? Now I put the aren't you kind of here. I put the aren't you in light gray to say that it doesn't really have to be there in English. And sometimes it would sound weird to say, You're good at taking pictures, aren't you? It's just a nice way to end the sentence. You could say, but it's very hard ending there. And adding that ne just makes it sound better. It doesn't really have to mean, aren't you? Or yeah, or right. It doesn't really mean that. Another thing I want to talk about is there is a meme in the Japanese teaching world. And I know I've also said this meme too that the first time someone tells you Jozu, it's not true. It's just them being nice, the Nihongo a Jozu thing. And then the second time they say it, then they mean it, is the way I normally talk about it. But I don't want you to think that Jozu means all the time they don't think you're good. It's not true. It's just that they're complimenting you for what you've already done. So don't take Jozu as an insult. But I mean, I do remember when I was a tour guide. Whenever they said Nihongo wa Jozu, I was like, oh man, I must have just said a mistake. And often that was the case. And that's where I got that impression. So it does happen. But just because someone tells you you're Jozu doesn't mean you're not Jozu. Does that make sense? You are. You could be good at taking pictures in this case. They're not just blowing smoke up your butt, right? They're not just trying to be nice to you. So, Shashin o Toro no ga Jozu desu ne. They really could mean that. And they most often do. So I wanted to. Dispel that thing that makes you think Jozu isn't a good thing. Moving on. Now, this next one's going to be a little bit interesting. Toshi wa 
取りたくないです。The verb phrase would be 年を取る。I mean, it's really not difficult when you think about it because we do this in English exactly this way. 年,年は取りたくないです。年は取りたくないです。年 means year, but it also means age, remember? So, what about it? As for age, 取りたくない I don't want to get it. What does that mean? I don't want to get old. 年は取りたくないです。It's one of those times where you really don't want to be doing direct translations because if you said, I don't want to take old, or I don't want to take age, or I don't want to take year, It wouldn't make sense, right? You just need to know that Toshi o toru as a phrase means to get old. Next one. Isho ni shashin o toru? Now, I purposely put this one in because I've been talking about it recently, and again, we don't teach this particular thing in the books. But if I said, Isho ni shashin o toritai, right? Isho ni shashin o toritai desu ka? It's weird. In Japanese, to directly ask somebody, do they want to do something? It's too direct with the Thai form. So often they'll say something like this they'll say, Isho ni shashin o toru? amongst friends, or Torimasu. They'll literally say, Torimasu, okay? And they'll up that little su at the end. Isho ni shashin o torimasu? And they assume you're going to say yes. So they say it pretty confidently. You could also just say, Isho ni shashin o torimasu ka? without doing The informal, where you up it at the end, you just make it very straight. And even though we directly translate it as, and even though we directly translate that as, are you going to take a photo with me? Which would sound weird in English. In Japanese, it really has the vibe of, will you take a photo with me? Or do you want to take a photo with me? Do you want to take a pic together? Is what I've translated this one to. So, Isho ni shashin o toru? Isho ni shashin o toru? Look, I'm just going to call it out. iPhone's the best. I'm just going to say it. iPhone's the best. iPhone de totta ga zo ga ichiban des. iPhone de totta ga zo ga ichiban des. Let the flame wars begin in the comments on this one. iPhone's the best. I have tried to go back to Android. It doesn't hold up. iPhone's just better. Prove me wrong. Oh, you get freedom with the Android. You can do things. I didn't, wasn't doing things with my phone anyway. What, all the things I can do on the Android, I, I wouldn't do anyway. iPhone's better.、Pfft. Samsung Galaxy. Pictures taken by iPhones are the best. Ichiban desu. They're the best. Now, we could have thrown some sort of adjective after Ichiban to say, Ichiban kirei desu. They are the most pretty, the prettiest, right? We could have said, Ichiban dame desu. The most worst. We could have said that too. Out of all the phones. So you can throw something in front of Ichiban to make it the most whatever that adjective is. All right, two new words I have to throw in here just to help us with the verbs we're going to be doing right after this. So, shinpai, it means a worry or a concern. Shinpai. And setsume, setsume means an explanation. An explanation. All right, let's look at some sentences. Shinpai ga oi desu. Shinpai ga oi desu. I hope. You don't have to say this. I have many worries. I have many worries. Now, if we were talking about someone else and they were struggling and they were the topic between me and a friend, let's say their name was Jeff. Jeff's always having a lot of problems. I could say,、mm, yeah, Jeff, 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 blah, blah, blah. Shinpai ga oi desu. I could say that, but probably I would say something more like, Shinpai ga oi mitai. It seems like he has a lot of problems. You do that in Japanese because you don't really know what's in their head. You don't know what they consider a shimpai. Does that make sense? This is, oh my gosh, this is a whole other topic. I'm not going to bring it up right now, but this comes up later in the books. But we do need to know when you're talking about someone else, it's a different way of saying it. You, don't, you say it seems like, you don't assume that you understand. For example, you don't say, George, wa ikitai desu. George wants to go. You say, George wa ikitai mitai desu. It seems that George wants to go. Or George wa ikita so desu. It seems that George wants to go. It looks like George wants to go. You don't say George wa ikitai desu because you don't know what's in their head. Okay? Rarely you might see it in a book where it says that. 
because the author knows what's in their head. But normally, there's other ways to talk about other people. Here, simpai ga oides really can almost only mean talking about myself. Simpai ga oides. Now, if I said mondai ga oides, and I'm talking about Jeff, he has a lot of problems. Then, look, that's from my perspective. Yeah, he has a lot of problems. Okay, I, I can see that he has problems. The fact that he's worrying or not, I don't know. Don't focus too deep on this. Just be kind of keep it in your head because it's one of those concepts that make your Japanese sound so much better when you're aware of it. Kind of like pitch accent. What? What? All right, number seven. Setsumei ga shitsuyo desu. Setsumei ga shitsuyo desu. Do we remember the word shitsuyo? Shitsuyo. I like that it's not hitsuyo. It's shitsuyo. Sometimes you'll hear it sound like shitsuyo, shitsuyo. Same thing with, with person. Hito. It's like, hito. It sounds like, hito, hito. Kare wa ishito desu ne. He's a good person. You'll hear that sound sometimes. An explanation is required. Shetsumei ga shitsuyo desu. All right. Next. Okaasan ga shinpai desu. Okaasan ga shinpai desu. Some of you are thinking that this means my mother is worried. Nope. That would have to be a verb in that case, which we don't know yet. It means my mother is a worry, which is weird in English, right? So it would have to be, I'm worried about my mother. I'm worried about my mother is a verb in English, but here in this particular sentence in Japanese, shinpai is a noun. My mother is a worry for me. It's something that concerns me. Shinpai can also mean concern. Number nine. I hope, I hope that's not the case. I hope it's, Do you remember those? わかりやすいです。わかりやすい means it's easy to understand. わかりにくい means it's difficult to understand. This explanation is hard to understand. All right, so now you've seen how 心配 and setsume work as nouns. Now let's make them into verbs. Shinpai suru, to worry. It's irregular because it's a suru verb. Just means it's a suru verb. And it's person thing o shinpai suru. The thing that you're worrying about is marked with o, and then you add shinpai suru. We can also, because look at what it says there, to worry about a person. So you're thinking, Wait a minute, I thought about in Japanese was no koto, was koto. It is. You can also say this, person thing no koto o shinpai suru. To worry about a thing in English, it stays the same. Because you don't say to worry a person. Oh, I don't want to worry person. I mean, I guess you could. I don't want to worry George. No, that is different. Worrying George is something we can't do yet. That's shinpai saseru. I don't mean to give that so early, but that means to make Someone worry. Causative. We're not there yet. Don't worry about it. Let's move on. I shouldn't have said it. Shinpai shinai de ne. Yeah, don't worry about that saseru thing yet. Shinpai shinai de ne. Don't worry. Okay. I kind of, again, put that in that gray to show you that you don't have to say okay. It's not like you're asking for confirmation. Shinpai shinai de ne. It just sounds nicer than. Shinpai shinai de. Sounds a little bit strong. Shinpai shinai de. 心配することはないよ。心配することはないよ。All right? What does that mean? We know from prior videos in this series, 心配することは means to worry. There is nothing to worry about. 心配することはないよ。Okay? Now, if we said 心配はないよ, it means there are no worries. 心配はないよ。very different from 心配することはない. There isn't anything to worry about. Although, you could argue. You could say both. 心配ないよ. All right. 私より自分のことを心配してください. 私より自分のことを心配してください. Who remembers yori? Book three. 私より自分のことを心配してください. Throw a little yo on the end. 私より自分のことを心配してくださいよ. More than me is what 私より means. More than me. 
or instead of me. 自分 yourself. 自分のことを心配してください。More than me, please worry about yourself. Now, this could be a nice thing that you're saying, right? Oh, let me help you with this. Let me help with it. Oh, you know what? Don't worry about it. Worry about yourself. You probably should worry about yourself more first, right? There's that thing on the airplane I think about all the time in my life, just for like a little bit of inspirational thinking here for a second. But you know, when you're on the airplane and they say, in the event of an emergency, oxygen masks will come down from the ceiling. And then the next line, they say something along the lines of, please put your mask on yourself first and then help anyone in need, like children or older people or whatnot. The meaning of that is like super important to me because it means before you help anyone else, help yourself. Because you might end up dying helping someone else. Yeah, they'll be fine, but you'll be dead. Help yourself and you can save more people then, right? So, more than me, please worry about yourself. All right, one more. Right off the bat, what does that mean? Ongoing present tense form. I am worried. Am worried. Or I am worrying, if you want to really take it to the te i m a s form. I am worrying or I am worried. What are you worried about? No koto, right? About what? Musume. You're worried about your daughter? But maybe you have three daughters. Which one are you talking about? Oh, I'm talking about my hitori gurashi no musume. My daughter living alone. So I'm worried about my daughter who lives by herself. We've just modified daughter with hitori gurashi. Next one. Kongetsu wa o kane ga tariru ka douka. Shinpai s t e i m a s 今月はお金が足りるかどうか心配しています。Nice grammar stacking there with the 足りるかどうか。What does 足りる mean? To have enough. かどうか or not. 今月 this month, お金が足りるかどうか心配しています。I'm worried if I have enough money this month. I, I bet you do. Just stop drinking coffee at Starbucks. That's what they tell us all, right? All right, next, let's look at setsume suru as a verb to explain. Also, it's irregular, which means it's just a suru verb, just conjugated like all of the suru verbs you already know. And it's very similar to what Shinbai does. It's o and no koto o setsume suru. I don't think we even need to actually explain that. Do we really need to explain that? I don't think we need to. これからルールを説明します。これからルールを説明します。これからルールを説明します。これから、from now、ルールを説明します。from now I will explain the rules。What am I doing right now? By the way, what am I doing right now? I'm explaining something, right? How would you, like, let's say that you referred to me as teacher. Instead of Joji, you called me sensei. Let's, let's flip it. Here's the English. What am I doing right now? I don't even want to give you the English. What, am I do- What is teacher doing right now? We're talking about verbs. It starts with ima. Ima. Now we have to have our subject. Sensei ga. At a basic level, right now, teacher is explaining, right? I am explaining. So, ima, sensei ga setsume shite imasu. He is explaining, right? Setsume ga, what am I explaining? How do you say verb? Do you know? It's doshi. Setsume ga doshi no koto o setsume shite imasu. Sensei ga doshi no koto o setsume shite imasu. Right now, teacher, right now, the teacher is explaining about verbs. Okay, we'll do one more thing and then we'll get to real life tweets and some fun comments. Here's our question. This is a question and answer. We're going to have one question and three possible answers. この電子レンジの使い方を説明しましょうかこの電子レンジの使い方を説明しましょうか Let's say you entered an Airbnb in Japan. 
and they're showing you the property. This is the washer and dryer, and this is the denshi renji, which means microwave, right? So, この電子レンジの使い方を説明しましょうか I ask you, hey, shall I explain how to use this microwave oven? Well, what are your answers? はい、お願いします。That's the best answer. はい、お願いします。It's the best answer to be polite. Yes, please. This one's weird, probably for an Airbnb, but just so that we can get the grammar out. あとで説明してください。あとで説明してください。Please explain it later. You could say this, if, probably to the Airbnb, I would just say, あ大丈夫です。Just say, 大丈夫です But we're trying to get some grammar in here. わかるから大丈夫です。わかるから大丈夫です。I know how, so it's okay. Okay? All right. Now let's look at some real life usage. Okay, this one is from a website giving you advice on something. 手術前一週間くらいからビタミン C をできるだけ多く取りましょう。最低でも1日3グラムくらい。So, 手術前 means prior to surgery or before surgery. 1週間くらいから from about one week. ビタミン C をできるだけ。ビタミン C を、all is the thing that we're going to be totally m a s h o w i n g o k a y That we're going to be doing totally m a s h o w with. ビタミン C をできるだけ多く。取りましょう。できるだけ means as much as possible. 多く much. As many. できるだけ多く as much as possible. 取りましょう Let's take. Take as much vitamin C as possible. 最低でも at the least, at the minimum, 1日3 gram くらい About 3 grams per day. Now I want to point out that we're using くらい here. You could also have used ぐらい And Notice that it's ishukan kurai and san gram kurai. Kurai and gurai can be used on both a time, ishukan, and an amount, gram. Next one. Oh, this one. Oh gosh. You're going to see a really beautiful picture in a second. Mankai no sakura to kisetsu hazure no yuki to aizu tetsudo o torimashita. Now, this is a lot of words. You Might not know. Mankai means full bloom. And sakura is a cherry. So full bloom cherries to and kisetsu hazure, out of season. Kisetsu means season, hazure means out of,、uh, shifted from normal, right? Season. No yuki, snow, out of season snow, and aizu tetsudo. Now, aizu. You almost never see tsu like this with a little dakten, with the little hash marks. But Aizu Wakamatsu, Aizu is an area that I actually went to on an Adventures in Asia video. Check it out. I'll try to link it in the description below. It's a really fun video where I essentially I throw a dart and I go to a random place and it's this beautiful place called Aizu Wakamatsu. Now, I don't know if I was at Aizu Tetsudo when I went、uh, at the Aizu Eki. I, I thought it was Aizu Wakamatsu. I'm not sure. Anyway. This guy took this photo and it is absolutely beautiful. Look at this photo. Now, I normally don't include the actual person that tweeted a photo, but he's got so many beautiful photos up here. It's at UYAR33. Definitely go look at his photos. They're absolutely stunning. All right, next tweet. あれから少し寝たけど、今度はいつ今、メンクリ予約した。でも、うまく説明できるか心配。Now this one threw me for a loop. It's just like last video where there was an English word in there that I had no idea what it was initially. Remember it was sumaho soshage, which is smartphone social games. Well, this has got menkuri, and I had no idea what it was, but let's read it again. あれから少し寝たけど、from then I slept a little bit. Now we don't know what happened, but obviously something happened. あれから from that point, 少し寝たけど、I slept a bit, but 今度はいつ、but now my stomach hurts, I've got stomach pains. 今、めんくり予約した。Now, I only took me a few seconds, but I realized they probably meant mental clinic, 
which is weird because there's a Japanese word for it, but mentaru kuriniku is now apparently menkuri. I don't know if every Japanese person will know this, but this is obviously a young person. Apparently they all know menkuri and they, they know it so well and they go so often that they can just throw menkuri up in a word. And I, I don't know. Ask your friend if they know what it means, but ima menkuri yoyaku shita. I made an appointment at the mental clinic. Demo umaku setsumei dekiru ka shinpai. Now, I don't give the source on this one because I feel it's sensitive information, okay? Um, I apologize for that, so I can't show you the source. But I like what the person wrote. Demo umaku setsumei dekiru ka shinpai. Because we're using two words that we have in here. Umaku means well, to do it well. Setsumei dekiru, to be able to explain it. I'm worried if I'll be able to explain it well. Okay? So, umaku setsumei dekiru ka shinpai. I'm worried if I can explain it well. All right, let's get to some recent comments. This one was from my numbers video. It says, Misao Okawa, rest in peace. And I don't know who that was, but they were the oldest person alive at one point, and they died in April. So I must have been talking in the numbers about ages, and Misao, uh, Okawa Misao actually lived until 117 years old. So she was number one at one point. Rest in peace. You should look her up. She got some fame at the end of her life because of her age. All right, this one is from the video that you probably missed because you didn't click on the Matrix video that I did. But uh, George can read my mind. Yes, I actually can read your mind. I know from all these years of teaching and from my own stupidity when I was learning, I know what you're thinking. There was a sentence where it was asa wa. Asawa was the sentence. It started with that. But we were showing the English first, and it said, in the morning. And I said, yeah, by the way, this isn't asa ni and asa ju and asa no naka. That's what he's talking about. I read your mind. Because if you see in the morning in English, you're thinking, oh, it must be something about in the middle of the morning. No, it's just asawa. Asa is the topic, and then we talked about it. So, yes, I can read your mind. More than you believe. All right, this was my video from two days ago, I believe. I have to say that is the most masculine Sailor Moon shirt I've ever seen. It takes a real man to pull that shirt off. You know what? Honestly, I love cute things. I really, really do. Um, I would buy notebooks in Korea that had like beautiful flowers on them. And like my favorite Pokemon are all like cute. Like Eevee. Come on, Eevee. I will always throw a pineapple at Eevee also because of the evolutions. Also, look, I love t-shirts, right? Like look at this shirt. This is like, I just bought this at Marshall's. It was like eight bucks. It's such a great shirt. It says like 1981, yeah, 1981 Japan tour for ACDC. That's so cool. I love t-shirts. And when I saw that Sailor Moon shirt, I had to get it. All right, just one more comment. This is on my video called 18 Years Ago, A Day in the Life of a Japanese Interpreter. And I wanted to kind of address this question. If I wanted to interpret, should I just do it freelance and find my way that way? If so, where do you even start? Closest big city to me is Houston, but one, my Nihongo ain't Jozu, and when it gets there, two, I don't know a soul that speaks Japanese in Texas. All right. Back in the day, when I was an interpreter, I just made a website. It was the old georgetromby.com website. If you want to see what it looks like, you can go to the Wayback Machine and type in georgetromby.com, and you'll see it just said Japanese interpreter at the top, and I was number one on Google search for Easily a couple years, it was the number one thing. So I got calls all the time to do interpreting work. But now, when you search for interpreter, it's all agencies. It's all interpreter world, interpret, interpretive dancing interpreter. I don't know what that was. Interpreter agency and all that. And so it's all agencies. So if you want to be an interpreter now, I think you register for those agencies. But number one, your Japanese has to be good. Interpreting will destroy you. It will absolutely destroy you. You will start and not be able to speak, and it will be the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened in your life. But how do you get started then? You volunteer. You get good at Japanese by helping Japanese people 
in your area if you can find them. Maybe you can help elderly people that are in the Japanese society here in the States. There's a lot of cities that have these like Japanese friendship clubs and there's a lot of older people that don't speak English and maybe they were married at one point to a, an American and now that person has died and they don't know how to like fix their electricity bill or something like that. So you talk to them and you help them. That's one way to do it. Or if you have a town that has a lot of tourists, maybe you try to strike up conversations with them and get used to speaking. But here's the thing. I don't know anymore how much interpreters are needed. There's so many agencies with a great Japanese interpreters now. I don't know if I started interpreting today, would I get any business? I don't know, okay? Uh, but get your Japanese really good before you try, okay? Before you try for money, at least. You don't want to embarrass yourself. I don't think it's a bad thing to embarrass yourself now, and I think it will really help you to interpret now to try because your brain will be on fire. Uh, and you don't know a soul that speaks Japanese in Texas. There are a ton of Japanese in Texas. Toyota just moved to Texas. There was a radio station that I used to listen to out of Texas that was completely in Japanese. That's it, guys. Remember, Japanese from Zero's new website is fromzero.com, and it's awesome. I'll see you all later. Bye. Sorry, I like to end on the full screen. That's what I'm doing. See you later. Bye, guys.